Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to answer a question from you, a question I received from a few folks, and then one from Felix Mercury, who is an intern in Kenya trying to promote EV sales. And this one really kind of touched me with his comment here explaining the story and how the depreciation of electric vehicles really matters to him. And so I found some good data and I wanted to dig into it a little bit to talk about the Tesla Model S and its depreciation or its resale value. All right, the first thing to think about are the different categories that really add up to the cost of a vehicle. The first is the fuel cost, the next would be insurance, then you have your maintenance and repairs, and the big one, depreciation. So there are a couple others, of course, but these are the big ones where I think the Tesla Model S stands out. Some of the other ones like financing really shouldn't make much of a difference because you're just talking about money there, not necessarily the how the car works or what the car does or anything like that. So first off, let's talk about fuel. And Tesla just recently announced that they have a new pricing for the supercharger usage. This is if you buy a new Tesla after January 15th, 2017, which is already passed. So unless you already have ordered it or have already received it, you're kind of out of luck. That is with the exception of any cars that were purchased certified pre-owned. These cars, which originally had the free supercharging for life, will retain it according to Tesla. Let's take a look at the supercharger map so I can point you at actually how you could do this. So I built this tool for you to use and I have another video here I'll link up in the card for you to check out, which shows the actual rates by state in the United States, as well as provinces and states in Canada, and then all the different countries in Europe. So you can actually use this to to calculate what a cost may be. If you knew how many miles you drove per month, per year, whatever it may be, you could adjust this calculator and see what the cost may be while paying for the actual supercharger usage if you're doing that. Now I do have another video where I looked at my cost, the cost that I actually spent on my fueling my car over a year. And this came from a question my wife asked me, uh, which actually led to this whole thing we're doing here with YouTube, where a lot of folks, this really resonated with them. The thing that was interesting in my analysis was that I found I was only saving about 40% over gas. Now, that's because I live in Southern California where electricity is really high compared to the rest of the United States. In fact, we're about 50% higher at our lowest than the national average. Now, other parts of the world have much higher gas prices, so they would be saving a ton more. Now, Tesla factors this in when you take a look at their calculator on their website when you go to buy a new Model S or Model X. Let's take a look at that. So on the site where you actually design and get your Model S, you can see that there are different options for pricing. You have the lease, the loan, or cash. Now on the cash tab, you can see that down here, they estimate in the base model here that you would save about $5,500 over five years. That's compared to a gas car. Again, this is hard to calculate because what is the price of electricity where you live and what is the price of gas? How much do you drive? So we click customize and here we can punch in something, the number of miles per year and the price per gallon. So for me, where I live, it's about $3 per gallon on average. And the miles I drive per year is probably 7,000. I don't drive a lot. So for me, I'm not saving a ton. So see how much that dropped from 5,500 to 3,500? So you can go here and you can play with this. If you drive, say, I don't know, 20,000 miles a year and it's $3, then you save about 10 grand over five years. Now, there are also some assumptions here about the cost of electricity. So you click on details, it'll take you down to the bottom here and show you kind of their methodology about how it works. But again, this will be subjective and it won't be exact. So take a look at my other video if you're interested on how I broke that down and how you could do the same thing for your own comparison. So the next big cost is insurance. Now this is highly subjective. I pay $100 a month for my 2013 Model S, which is just about what my wife pays for her 2013 Acura RDX, which is the smaller SUV from Acura. Now that is because we bundle home life and two other cars all together. So we get a big discount. Now it's gonna vary for you based on your age, based on your credit score, based on whether or not you own a home, all these things. So insurance companies are doing this math all the time, trying to figure out essentially what the right price is for the risk and all that but it will vary. One thing to consider is that the Tesla really only accepts OEM parts and some insurers will ask for more insurance to cover that, meaning uh, higher end cars, you only want them to be fixed by that manufacturer. You don't want someone else to try to 
put in an engine in your car or some other part that may be really critical to it. You know, fender and bodywork is one thing, but when you're talking about replacing suspension or in the case of a Tesla, something like the motor, really no one else can do it. So they may ask for more. I declined mine, but don't take my word for it. I am not an insurance expert. So make sure to ask about OEM parts and whether or not that's included or if it's an additional charge when you're doing your research for your insurance. There is one story though that came up on Tesla Roddy not too long ago about uh, somebody that got into an accident, it seemed relatively minor. The cost was about $30,000 from the shop to fix, which was not the Tesla, Tesla shop, it was a different body shop. And their insurance, which was Costco insurance, declined essentially to pay that and deemed it an entire loss. Now the problem was is that they paid over $100,000 for this, but because there was no Kelly Blue Book uh, depreciation number to go off, they calculated the value at about $75,000, which really doesn't cover the cost of a new vehicle. So he was going to be on the hook for this big expense to try to just even recoup or, you know, get another Tesla. They actually went back on it eventually, so it wasn't all bad, but it turns out that when you're doing your research on insurance, make sure you ask a lot of questions because the Teslas aren't exactly like all the other cars. I can't just go to a Honda dealer down the road to get something fixed. I may need a specialty part that's ordered, maybe back ordered, I may need a rental, all these other kind of things that go into the count. So make sure you get really good insurance and make sure you ask a lot of questions. The other big thing are maintenance and repairs. And this covers things like tires, brakes, oil changes on ICE vehicles, the gas powered antiquated ones that we don't drive and all that kind of stuff that you typically have to deal with with a car. Now, Teslas are extremely low. In fact, I did a video on it. You can go check it out in the card up above, and you can see how I compare it to other high-end luxury cars. Remember, if you're paying seventy-five dollars to $100,000 for a car, you're buying a really high-end vehicle, even if you know the inside doesn't have all the, the chrome and bells and whistles as some of the other ones. It's the technology that you're paying for, and you're gonna have to compare it to other cars in a similar price range. So if you compare to those, Tesla's actually a great deal. It's much closer to say an Acura or Infiniti, these kind of affordable luxury, the just a step up from your Honda, Nissan, and Toyotas. Now I did have my own issue though with a windshield wiper, which you can go check out in that other video as well. And I tell you the story where they actually sent somebody to my house to fix it which was pretty cool. And it was weird that it broke. I mean, that does raise an eyebrow about the durability of some of these things. I've never heard of a the arm of a windshield wiper breaking in a three-year-old car that's only gone 15,000 miles. So who knows what's going on with that? But long story short, they took care of the problem for free. So I had a good experience, but not to say that that's how it's gonna go for you or for everyone else out there. Now, Consumer Reports originally rated the Tesla Model S as basically the best car ever. It broke their scale. It got 103 out of 100. They had to adjust the scale and then they did some more research and some more testing and they found that there were some reliability issues that they discovered and they downgraded it from its highest rating. Then they came back a few months later and actually realized that their method that they did that wasn't perfect, so they, they put it back into a recommended buy. However, the Tesla Model X, the SUV, is still down on their list. They're not, not huge fans of that. This gets us to the big one, depreciation. And depreciation is essentially the value of the vehicle that you're losing because the cars just wear out through normal wear and tear. The faster it wears out or the higher dollar amount it started at, the more money you're gonna be losing faster. And so the big question is, how does the Tesla Model S compare to some of the other cars? Well, first let's take a look at this infographic and see how depreciation actually works and kind of what it looks like on some standard vehicles. So on Kelly Blue Book, you can see that they have this five-year cost to own. It's essentially all of your out-of-pocket expenses plus depreciation, that's the loss in value. So this isn't money that you're paying out, but it's essentially money you're losing if you go to resell the car. And that said, if you don't want to resell it or it's 20 years later, you don't really have to worry too much about it. It will play a factor, but really most people keep their car around five years here in the United States. So that's where you get this five year mark. And what they're showing are huge losses there. Essentially, here's a couple examples where you have uh, sedan A and sedan B. They both were purchased for the same price, $19,272. There's the out-of-pocket expenses, which are a little bit different. And then the depreciation on the Model B was actually a lot more than Model A. So this is where if you were comparing, say, sedans or EVs in this case with the Tesla, 
you'd want to really think about this. So if you're going to sell your Tesla in a couple years, maybe upgrade, then this is something to really think about because that loss in value is the single biggest expense that you'll actually lose. All the money that you're actually going to lose in owning a vehicle. Again, it's not money you're paying, but it's money you're losing. So you could be getting that money back when you resell it, but you won't be because it depreciated. Just one quick side note here, for whatever reason, Kelly Blue Book doesn't rate Teslas at all. And I think that's really a miss on their part. I mean, these cars have been out for a while. It's not like they're brand new. And there are other electric vehicles. As you can see here, this is the 2016 highest best cars for their cost to ownership for electric vehicles. And they're rating a bunch of them here. They have a bunch of categories. So why not? What's up, KBB? How come you don't rate the Tesla? What's the deal? So the site Autolist did some analysis where they actually looked at about 1.6 million data points to see what the depreciation of a Tesla Model S would be compared to a lot of other cars. And thanks to them, we have these beautiful charts to explain this to us. So let's dive into the data. As you can see in this chart here, and as the title suggests, Tesla is in a class of its own. The green, the light green is the Model S, and you can see the depreciation curve. So the way this works is it starts essentially after you've hit 10,000 miles up to 100,000 miles. And they had to do this because the Teslas have a very different kind of wear and tear about them than more ICE vehicles, more gas powered cars. And as you can see, as time goes on, the depreciation curve actually flattens out more and more for the Tesla Model S. And this is compared to some pretty high-end cars here, right? The LS460 and S-Class Mercedes. These are all very high-end vehicles, and the Tesla beating them is pretty impressive. But some of those cars are extremely expensive, so it does make sense that they would drop in more value quicker. But really, who's going to be buying a car with 100,000 miles for $70,000? I mean, that seems like pretty insane to me, with the exception of a vehicle that's rated to go 500,000 miles or more. And when you compare other EVs to other gas-powered equivalents, you can see that they actually depreciate really, really dramatically compared to a Tesla. A Tesla's hang actually pretty well with these cheaper cars. You know, the Prius here, which after 100,000 miles looks like it's just about between 40 and 50 percent. That's pretty close to what the Tesla is. So the Tesla is actually doing really well compared to even cheaper cars, which remember, if you're starting out at maybe 25, 30 thousand dollars, there's not a whole lot of money there to lose before you sell the vehicle. Unlike a car that starts out at 75 or 100 thousand dollars, where there's a lot of kind of room in there for it to really drop in value. And when you look at Tesla compared to other EVs in their resale value, this is the percent variation from the expected price. So this is essentially, are they doing better than they were expected to or worse? You can see all of them are negative with the exception of Tesla's up to 5% higher, which is pretty high considering how these charts work and how it's a relative percentage. Even Elon tweeted a while ago that the Tesla Model S has the highest value retention after three years, and they compared it to cars that really are a lot cheaper, the RAV4 EV, the Focus Electric, the Volt. And you can really just assume that now with the free supercharging for life, the Tesla Model S is gonna retain its value for a long while into the future. The one thing I will say about the mo older Model S's like I have is that you're missing some of the bells and whistles. So for example, my car doesn't have autopilot. It can't really get autopilot unless I spend maybe 20 grand or something if, if they'd even do it. Other things like the mirrors folding in or the parking sensors, those can be added for a couple thousand dollars here and there, but that is really gonna be the main difference. The autopilot is the big one. That's when you actually saw a surge in certified pre-owned vehicles on the Tesla website. But beyond that, they're gonna hold their value because they're just great cars. They're well built, at least in my experience and from everyone I know that has one, and they drive like nothing else. They are really a blast. I mean, it's turned my whole family into a road trip family. So there you have it. Tesla Model S's depreciate generally better than almost all the other vehicles out there that you can compare them to with the exception of the really cheap gas powered cars. So if you're really just looking for the cheapest thing, yeah, Tesla's not the right answer for you. However, if you're in the market for maybe say a higher end BMW, even if it's like a five series or an Audi A6 or something like that, these are gonna actually hold their value really well. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit better and maybe a lot better depending on uh, how these things go in the future, whatever Tesla announces next, the over there updates. Remember, these things are always getting better. I'm getting new features in my car, even though it's already three years old.
So if you're in the market for a new Tesla, I would like to offer you something, something that gets me exactly $0, but gets you $1,000 off. This isn't some scam or some BS kind of thing. It's essentially the Tesla referral program. So all owners of Teslas can offer you this. So you can use the code on the screen here or down in the description below, and you can use that to get $1,000 off. If I get three of them, then my son will get one of the mini electric Model S's that he can drive around. So if you'd love to help him out and maybe, you know, see some photos of him down the road driving one, consider sharing that link or using it yourself. And if we get eight people to do it, then you will actually send me to the Model 3 delivery ceremony. I think they call it an event. I'm calling it a ceremony because that is a special moment in our history. And if you'd like to either have my son riding around in style in a little mini Model S or me at the Model 3 event, sharing everything I knew, recording, doing the whole YouTube thing there, uh, please consider using that link down below or sharing it with anyone else you know. Again, no out-of-pocket cost to you. There's nothing catchy here about it. It's just a referral code that all Tesla owners have to share with other folks. So uh, check that out uh, on the screen again or down in the description below. And I really, really do appreciate it. In fact, if you do buy one using that, I'd be happy to do a behind the scenes chat with you, show you kind of how the studio is set up, what I do, or really just ask me anything you want for 30 minutes. So uh, consider that and uh, shoot me a note if you actually take me up on that. All right, and thanks for joining me. I really do love sharing these videos with you and doing all the research, digging into the data, trying to see what the real meaning of these things are without all the speculation and all the kind of punditry that happens out in the media. Just really trying to understand the data. I think this is something that we share. And so I love that you guys continue to give me feedback in the comments below, whether it's about how the music sucks or how my lighting's bad or how my data's off or how great it is or how much it inspired you or how helpful it was, whatever the case may be. I love all the feedback. And if you are new to the family here, I'd love for you to join us. I post new videos every single week on topics related to Tesla, electric vehicles, solar energy, all the kind of stuff around sustainability. So if, you, if you'd like to, go ahead and subscribe down below. And if you are already part of the family, hey, please like this video and share it with someone you know. Share it with someone that might find this informative or maybe is on the edge and not sure about joining the EV family. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you back here next time.